I think we have like a minute. Um, you count, okay? Quietly. Just count. <laughs> okay. Are, are we going to be live streaming, Brother Andre? Okay. We're live streaming. Well, how wonderful <clears throat> that we can send these messages um, out. Yes. Yes. For, for long, yeah, long distance. Okay. Wonderful. Let's pray and ask for God's presence to be with us. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you love us so much. You've shown us in so many ways how much you love us. And the most important way is sending your son, Jesus, living a perfect life and showing us how to live, how to be educated, how to work, and also, if necessary, how to die. Father, we want to be like Jesus. We want to be like you. And we know that the power of the Holy Spirit will cause that to happen. And so we humble ourselves. We pray just now that our hearts will be cleansed once again. If there's any stain of sin there, we want it clean so that nothing separates us from you and the message that you want to share with us today. So use these um, earthen vessels to proclaim the truth as it is in in true education. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> well, this room is set up to help you understand what to do with a child that would, we would say, enter second grade to eighth grade. So if you had a child that was nine years old, that would be considered second grade. And then after that, you know, if, if you're going by grades and coming out of the world system of education, that's the way we think. So, um, yes, show that. I passed out this sheet here. And this is a sheet that's found in the Sunlight Education um, Curriculum Catalog. Now this is a catalog, these are items that we used to sell from Sunlight, but now their program is available free, uh, free to download. Um, you can get them already printed, many of the books are already printed through Amazon. But this gives an outline of suggested, <coughs> excuse me, suggested uh, material to go through per age. And so this book, it, or this paper rather, is the outline of the school program. So this goes through what's recommended for birth um, right on up through ages 25 and beyond. And so this is a really handy tool. This is also included in um, many of the school books that we're going to go through and demonstrate. So here, um, for birth through ages 10, what's recommended? What program is recommended? What does it say? The family Bible lessons. So you already had a taste of the family Bible lesson for worship this morning and for our meeting last night. The family Bible lesson series, we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. Um, but we want to think about like when we're looking at true education, there's three main aspects of study. It's to develop the mental, the physical, and the spiritual. And so as we're looking at what kind of a program to use for our children, we want to incorporate all three of those aspects into their education. And that's what Sunlight does. It did it for you, but um, you, can, you don't have to use Sunlight. It's just a nice tool. So for birth to age seven, it's the Family Bible Lesson series. That series, you want to say more about that series? Well, we'll talk more about it tomorrow. So come tomorrow. Uh, at age eight, what um, do you start adding with the family Bible lessons? Just language. A language program. So depending on the child, some children are not ready at eight, but depending on the child, it's recommended 
about the age of eight to start incorporating with your family Bible lessons a good solid language program and you spend an entire year just doing that. Why do you think you do that? To give them a solid foundation. How many of us know how to spell perfectly? Oh. Or maybe we mess up with reading or um, writing. How's our penmanship? So uh, Sunlight recognizes that that's an essential quality for each of us to develop. And so you spend an entire year just working on that with the family Bible lessons. And then for... Can I show mm -hmm. Um, language. Instead of English, it's language. And this is for the 238 program, but I have um, in this bin right here the Riggs program uh, that would help you uh, implement phonics. It's a little more challenging curriculum to deal with. Um, it's written for teachers. Um, there's some um, uh, cards, for, uh, uh, what are they called? Phonics cards here. Um, I purchased this from someone who had finished using it, so um, I think there's a, a, a disc in here that gives the sounds of the letters and things like that. So that would be the first uh, part to um, teaching reading, but then I also have another curriculum here, it's called the Creation Reading Course, and this was put together by an Adventist lady. And she um, showed this to the director of Sunlight uh, years ago, and it wasn't finished yet, but uh, the director was pleased with it. And so this is a, a nice program. It's, I have all the um, receipts in here so you could see the cost and then where you could order that from if you wanted uh, that kind of a program for teaching reading. I just wanted to mention in this, uh, we call it the Roadmap and Route or Catalog from Sunlight, it's a great resource. It gives schedules for the different ages, it gives information on true education, it goes through and gives a lot more information on each of these programs, what you're going to be learning and all of that. So if you want a catalog, you can print it off for free from the Sunlight website, but you can also purchase it from us, uh, we just have it at cost. Um, and it's in those rooms in the back. So you're welcome to look at that. We have a number of them. But now we're going to talk about the Desire of All Nations program. That's for ages 9 to 15 or older. <laughs> when we went, we got this program when I was um, around 8, but we didn't start it then. And my mom, I think she got more out of it than I did. So we're going to show you that particular program, how it's set up, and how you can use some of the tools, or you don't have to use some of the tools. Tools are wonderful. Um, but, but we want to show you kind of how it all works together. Okay. Um, <clears throat> before taking, though, the Desire of All Nations program uh, for ages 9 to 15, it's recommended, it was recommended, that you would... Um, take a training course in true education. So Sunlight has a training course made up and you can print it from the PDFs. It's called the 10 Principles of True Education, a training course for parents and teachers. When I uh, received the Sunlight material, I didn't feel like, even after taking this, I did not feel like I was a teacher because I still had that mentality. Uh, that we learn about, that I learned about in the book Studies in Christian Education by E.A. Sutherland, that the, the papal system, the papal, it was a, po a pope that originated the uh, system of education that has the degrees and, and so forth. It's a worldly system, a pagan papal system. And that, after reading this book, I was convicted. <laughs> of course, I had to go back and I had to study it for myself, and, and through the years, even working the seven and a half years at Sunlight, I'm like questioning everything. Why was this put together? Why was it put together like this? It was like a little child, you know. 
why, why, why? But I, I had to make sure, first of all, for my own child, but not only my own, but others. If I'm going to promote something, I want to make sure that you know, it is sound. And so this book is what changed my life, and it's very interesting because I bought this book from Dr. Agatha Thrash. And God has kind of brought me full circle. You know, now we're living in her house. Um, <clears throat> she understood, uh, probably more than anyone else here at UT Pines, uh, what true education is and, and was. And so from that, then the Lord led me to this, Sunlight, and then I got this book, the, the, the Ten Principles of True Education. My husband made a copy for himself. He made it for um, a couple other people. Guess what? They didn't read it. I read it. I didn't just read it. I studied it. It's an interactive course. So that means you write your answers in. And um, so this helped me tremendously. Um, it's got ten chapters, and it correlates the, the ten principles of true education with the ten commandments. And um, it's written so that that same pattern that you have in the family Bible lessons, you have that same pattern of study here, and that's where you have, um, you have your Bible lesson, you get your facts from your Bible first, and then you have um, nature to help you understand it. And uh, the 10 Principle Program recommends that you read Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, recommends that you read studies in Christian education, and also Living Fountains or Broken Cisterns that E.A. Sutherland wrote. And, and you look at this, how many pages? Two, three hundred pages? And you think, oh, when am I ever going to get through that? You get through it a chapter at a time. How much does it cost? It, well, it's free now. <laughs> I mean, you can print it. Of course, it's going to cost you. It cost $155 for this notebook. And then you got the book, Studies in Christian Education. I think you got Living Fountains. And then um, she also sent out some, um, some videos you could watch. And then it was like borrowing, and then you, you sent them back. Um, I'm just going to go through the titles. Uh, character building. So what is true education? Character building. The Bible, the educator, the textbook. The master teacher. And you know, when you go through these, they, they really... Um, make you like, oh, wow. I mean, your eyes just open up and hopefully your heart too. But when you look at the book Education, you go through the index, you see, oh, a lot of these principles are just taken right from the spirit of prophecy. So once again, you'll find in the book Education, oh, it opens up your eyes to what's in the Bible. <laughs> and so God is just trying in so many ways to help us see what, um, what his principles are. In chapter 4 is illustrations. Uh, the illustrations, just like with nature, why do we have to study nature? I mean, we should be studying just how to get ready for Jesus to come and to pass through the time of trouble, right? That was my mentality. Um, but you'll be able to see more and understand more, even of that, through nature. Nature is a lens. There, it's our illustrations, and illustrations help us remember, and children love illustrations, don't they? Okay, chapter 5 is something we're going to go over um, tomorrow. Chapter 5 is called the under teacher, teacher, student, and the mind. So it talks about the developing brain. And uh, I found that chapter to be very interesting because I'd already heard Dr. Agatha, her presentation on the development of a child, and it's almost as though it was transcribed and put into this, this chapter so that we can understand why does God say, from a scientific standpoint, why does God say, keep your children with you till 8 to 10? Why? <laughs> we have to become like a little child in that when children are at a certain age. They, why? 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 Right? <laughs> they want to know. And that's the way God, um, he cares that we uh, understand why. All right. Physical culture is chapter 6. Once again, why is it so important for a child not to be sitting and, and reading uh, books uh, at an early age? There's so many reasons. One's the eyes, the other is the brain, and, um, and the other is the physical culture. They need to develop strong bodies 
so they can be healthy. And um, <clears throat> so physical culture, chapter 6. And se chapter 7, there's many studies there. Uh, there's a study on books. What kind of books should our children be reading? What kind of, uh, oh, what about drama? What about drama? Did God use drama in teaching? <clears throat> toys. How many toys should a child have? Dress. How should we dress? What does it mean? What does the dress even say? Uh, music. Music principles. And then finances. And that's the one um, we were just looking for what was recommended at that time. But most importantly, and I don't know, I did, did not bring it up, it's in my car, the book Stewardship. Stewardship can be used for that. Uh, chapter 8, Obedience and Discipline. That's another question parents have. How do I discipline my child? How do I get them to obey, right? Is it the same way as my parents? You know, they beat me. Should I beat my children? <laughs> I mean, not that uh, the rod isn't important, but how to use it. Okay, and uh, chapter 9 is how to teach academics through the Bible, because the Bible is to be our main textbook. How do you do that? So all of these books, all the way down to the family Bible lessons that you can use for, a, you know, a tiny infant, all the way up, really, uh, your whole life. The lady who was the director of Sunlight, she, as a young person, she <coughs> wanted to teach people, as she read from the Spirit of Prophecy, we need to have our own books, and our own books should teach how to study the Bible, how to understand it. And so the whole purpose of our education is to understand God, to know him. And so these books are written so that you have an academic book in your hands. That's kind of like a transition out of the, the false system, having an academic book, but the Bible is the main textbook in each of those academic subjects. Can you use the sunlight material, these tools, can you use them and still have children that aren't converted? Yeah, you can. You can. And so this is not the, your salvation uh, using the sunlight material and, and knowing every word. It's allowing God to speak to each of us, even our children, and have that personal relationship with God and have God, this, have God be directing the education. You know, the parents, what, what should we do today to help my child, this child, this child, this child, to have different missions to fulfill the mission that they're called to. And I always think of um, John the Baptist's uh, father, Zechariah. We're told that he kept ever before John his mission. And then John had to cooperate, and he had to want that too. So John, John chose to live in the country, in the wilderness, so that he knew the temptations were greater in the city. So how to teach these academics is chapter 9 and chapter 10 is the higher course. Graduation, we don't graduate down here. Oh, when you see the cap and gown, that's really in a, well, I, I'm not going to say, but when Jesus comes, he's, gonna, he's got a crown for us and he's got a robe. He wants to put that robe of righteousness on us today if we surrender to him, a cap and a gown. We graduate when we leave this place to the higher school, the higher school, the university, <laughs> university. Okay, so the 10 principles of true education, uh, we'll go over more uh, of that, chapter 5, tomorrow. But um, let's see, Joshua White, uh, I have purchased a couple of his little books. One is called The 10 Principles of edu True Education, Joshua White, I think it's $1.50. And then he has one in Spanish. So I have those in the other room, just so that you know. Some options. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, you need this? Yes. Are you going to show something else? No. So parent education is essential in this journey of true education. And so the more you know, the easier this journey will be. What's the foundation of study? The Bible. So we need to know how to study the Bible. And so we have some resources here. This little book here, it's called Bible Study. You can get it from Sunlight Free, or you can purchase it through Amazon. Oh, I do have it in the back room. My I mom has a whole several, stack of them. Yeah, several copies. 
Now, in this book, it's going to teach you tools of Bible study. How many of you have ever used a Strong's Concordance? Good. Those are essential tools. The Strong's Concordance. What does the Strong's Concordance do? Strong's. <laughs> of course, there's electronic forms, but it's so good to have hard copies. Our children need to learn how to use the hard copy and even a map. So many young people today, they're totally lost without the GPS. We don't want our young people to be that way. So this is like our GPS. A, a Strong's Concordance. Let's say I want to look up the word. What's our character quality that we're studying this week? Purity. Purity. So I'm going to turn to purity in this book, or pure. or pure, and it's going to give me all the verses that have that word. And then I can also look up the meaning of, you know, in some uh, verses, the meaning will be a slightly different than in other verses, so I can look up the exact meaning. So that's a great resource. This booklet teaches you how to use that resource. What's another good one, Mom? Another good tool? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, of course, the 1828 Dictionary, here's a hard copy. It's big. Children really need a hard copy. Um, probably hmm, between 12 and 14, if they've been converted. Um, maybe uh, that's when Kim started learning computer. My son started look, learning computer at about 8, and all he wanted on it was games. Addicted right away. And that computer crashed, praise God. Um, but um, all through his life, he's been addicted. Yes. At, at just at such an early age. So you want them to be converted. And uh, then, of course, I, I learned how to use the computer, and uh, I learned how to study the H.E. White books. Uh, here's an index, hard copy, just one of the, this is A to F. So what does that do? So then, all right, let's go back to first the dictionary. This dictionary, 1828, that's the year. It was put out, 1828. When was the Spirit of Prophecy written? In the 1800s. So the words that are used in Ellen White's writings, the definitions from that time period are going to be found in the 1828 dictionary. Do words change in their meaning over time? Yeah. It's really sad how things are going. We just uh, took some long flights, and instead of saying uh, turbulence now on the airlines, they say rough air. I'm like, we're just getting dumber and dumber. But we want to go back to the original, like, see what these words really mean. So the 1828 Dictionary is a great resource. I, I just want to mention before you go on also that the book Spelling from the Scriptures, that's another book that's uh, brought in at this time with the 238 program. And we're going to talk a little bit uh, later on the uh, Rainbow Covenant book. And uh, the Rainbow Covenant, of course, uh, when the rainbow came out, you know, it was the time of the flood and the ark and everything. And so there are studies in here on the covenant, the everlasting covenant and the rainbow and Noah and so forth. And so as you're going through the rainbow covenant, you could also be introducing uh, the spelling from the scriptures. And when we're talking about spelling words, it's not just how do you spell the word. It's what is the definition of the word. And so both the Strong's and the dictionary can be used at that time. And when you're just using, using it with a child that's just learning how to read and isn't real, um, do, you know, doing a real well, you just give them a couple. You know, one, start with one, you know, how to do a spelling card. And in the spelling from the scriptures, it tells you how to do a spelling card. All right. And so... Um, what it's doing is teaching the child how to study the Bible, and when they study their academic subject, there are words that they don't know, they don't understand, and so this is how you find out, and you take time to do it. When I was younger, I didn't ever take time to, to find out what these words mean, so I do that now a lot. Do I make a spelling card? No, not always, but uh, that's the best way to remember, is to write it down. Write it down, then you can go back to it, or of course you can go back to the book, but it's nice to have it written down. You're helping your child develop their vocabulary, expand their um, world in regards to words and their meaning and so forth. And I have more of these in the uh, rooms to sell as well that I got from Amazon. So another tool in Bible study is the Ellen White Index. This is the topical index. So let's say we're learning about purity. 
Well, we can go to this. Of course, I would have to have the other volume to get to the letter P, because this is just A to F, and I would look up that word, and I could go in here and find a bunch of references from the Spirit of Prophecy that use that particular word. So, <clears throat> of course, now we have the CD-ROM. We can just type it in, but learning how to do it in hard copy is essential. And I usually, every lesson, I usually go to the index to find a few quotes. You don't have to read them all. There can be a hundred sometimes or more. And so I read a few to get a, a kind of a balanced idea of what she says about that word. So if I'm going to learn, I want to learn more about purity, I'm going to look it up in the Strong's Concordance, and I'm going to read all the Bible verses on purity or pure. I'm going to look up the definition in the 18, 1828 Dictionary. I'm going to look up the references in the Topical Index. And then there's some other tools. Let's say you're studying a word and it's not in the Bible. What could help you in that? A synonym finder. This is um, the synonym finder that we've used throughout the years. Huge book. And it has a bunch of other words for words. So you can look up this. When um, the sunlight was being put together, they have books on space exploration. They have books on multiplication. What the authors did, they went, if they, it wasn't in the Bible, they went to the synonym finder. Well, what's another uh, word for space exploration? And so they would look it up, and it gave them, it just opened their world up into, oh, maybe that topic is in the Bible. So that's a, a great tool. And and you, you do have um, a book in the nature lessons called Space Exploration. It's got a four on it. What does that mean? We'll get to that, Mom. Okay, one more tool that we use in Bible study is called the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. What does this do? This is a cross-reference um, book. So if you have a verse, you can look up a verse, and it's going to give you other verses that go along with that verse. Cross-reference. So another great tool in Bible study. And all of these tools are explained in this little book, because you're not going to remember it all if you've never heard these things before, in this little book, Bible study. It's a small little book. It's a great resource. One other thing that we recommend for children who are young is a large print Bible. Now, why do we use a large print Bible? Because the developing child, their eyes are still developing. <laughs> they, you don't want them to be straining. And I know it's, you know, you have those tiny little Bibles because they're tiny and so it's easy for the child to hold and so forth. But as they're going, they're starting to expand their world in regards to different academic topics. You want them to be looking at those words in large print. It'll be easier on the eyes, and if it has wide margins, too, they can start marking their Bible. So these are some of the tools in Bible study. For the Desire of All Nations program, not only do we learn how to study the Bible in the Bible, but we also use the book, The Desire of Ages. So this program, we call it the 2 through 8 program, as another term, is all based on the Desire of Ages. So you're going through the early life of Christ with the child. Now, we have a study guide. This also includes the chapter from Desire of Ages, so you don't have to have a separate book. And after you read some of the chapter, you have a ton of review questions. And the review questions help you uh, reflect on what you've learned what you have just read. Not to just hurriedly read through it and then forget about it, but actually stop and think about it. There's other things in here, memory verse suggestions, uh, the, your character quality that you're going to be studying for that particular chapter in Desire of Ages. So you have a student book that has just blank places, and then you have the teacher book that has the answers filled in. 
We've been singing some of the memory verses from Sunlight. The memory verses are all put to song, and they're available. You can either burn them onto a CD, or they're available in MP3 files. And then there's a song book. So if you play the piano, you can actually play the scripture songs right there. And we I have a lot of the scripture song books for volume one over um, on the tables that are for sale. Then there's one other book. This is called uh, the KJV Bible Lesson. So this is a study guide with your Bible lesson, which is from your, so the same chapter in Desire of Ages, but it's the Bible references. We're going to talk more about what that entails in a little bit. Do you want to go? Oh, well, just one other thing. In, in these study guides, it says like volume one, but that's chapters one through six. So you have those chapters in that one book. So then we have three volumes of that, Desire of Ages. Okay. So this table represents the most essential topic, which is the Bible lesson, the Bible lesson, okay? So we have our Bible study tools, we have our Desire of Ages, and now we're going to get into, there's academic subjects. There's seven academic subjects that center on the Bible lesson, and that's Yes, so this right here, we can actually pass these around. If you want one, you can take it. If you don't want one, just leave it when you're done. So this is called the Roadmap and Route. And the design of the Desire of All Nations program was to take the child through the early life of Christ. And if you open that up, I'll need one too, Mom. You, oh, here, I'll just do it here. It's actually in your catalog, and I just printed it small for you. It was recommended that if you decide to use this program, you can use all of the books, the whole program as it's designed, or you can just pull a book and say, oh, this is interesting, and I'll just go through one book at a time or however you like. But if you were to use the whole program, it was suggested that you take this little roadmap and route, and as you go through a book, you date it. So this is one of your records to keep. In case someone comes knocking at your door and asking, what do you do in your home school? So it gives you a nice a way to keep a record of all the things that you're going to be studying. So here, your first column in your roadmap and route is your Bible. The Bible's the center. And so lesson one, we're going to say lesson one corresponds with chapter one in the Desire of Ages. So each of our academic books, here around the room, we have our seven academic subjects, and they're all color-coordinated. So children, what color is health? Red. It's red. And we're going to get into a book called The Covenant Book, and it's going to tell us what these colors represent. But first we have red, and then we have math is orange, music is yellow, nature is green. green, HGP stands for History, Geography, Prophecy, it's blue, language is and voice is a lavender, the, yeah, it, I think it's like indigo and violet. So what colors, why do we have these colors in order like this? What other thing does it look like? A rainbow. God has a meaning in the rainbow for us. Uh, Satan has perverted it, but we want to redeem the rainbow. And there's actually seven colors in the rainbow, and these are the seven colors in the rainbow. So for our academic subjects, we have for health, we have a health book. And I was telling you that lesson one corresponds with which chapter? Chapter one in Desire of Ages. And that's what this number represents in the top corner. So this number is not um, grade or, or anything like that. This just tells you this is lesson one or chapter one of the Desire of Ages. Make sense? All right. So lesson one uh, in our, or chapter one in our Bible lesson, look at your roadmap and route. What are you learning for your Bible class for lesson one? Well, it says the Desire of Ages chapter is God with us. Do you see that? God with us. 
the character quality that you're going to be learning for that particular lesson is love. All right? And so then we're going to go all the way across, and we're going to see what, what subject we're learning in each, or what topic we're learning in each of these academic subjects for chapter one of Desire of Ages. So lesson one in health is, what is it called? What is health? Math is called? What is math? music, what is music, and so forth. So lesson one, you're just beginning to look at what is that subject. It's an introduction to those subjects. Now, if you were to use this program in its entirety, you would start with your Bible lesson, and then you would go and you would learn some from your health book, some from your math book, some from your music book, now, going through all seven books every day, that would be overwhelming. So we don't recommend doing that. It's just recommended that you go through one section, it's called a research section, in two books every day, at the most. Now, some re research sections are pretty short. In our books here, uh, when they're printed from Amazon, we have um, a few things in the front here, there's a suggested outline of how, how many pages to go through uh, each day, what to do each day, and this kind of sets you up for the rest of the program. Then you have a teacher section. I will go through just a few things in the teacher section. Most of the teacher sections are the same. How many uh, heads of households do we have? Do we have more than seven? Probably more than seven here. Um, we probably don't have s more than seven of each of lesson one. No, okay. All right, in our teacher section, there's a lot of information that's repeated. And I just want to show you how it's set up because some people look at this and they get overwhelmed. And then we're, we're going to get into some hands-on things, so don't worry, children. Okay, let's pass out all the ones for as many people who can see that. If we turn to get past all the introduction stuff, you're going to find this section called Teacher Section. Right after that page, it used to be printed in color, but Amazon doesn't let us print one thing in color, so this is how we've done it. Um, this, it says Instructions for the Teacher. I just want to show you how it's set up. So, Instructions for the Teacher. You have step one. This is study the Bible lesson and begin to memorize the memory verses. Familiarize yourself with the character quality. That information is going to be the same in every single book. So once, w what is that telling you to do? Before you even get into this book, you as the teacher need to at, at least be aware of what your Bible lesson is going to be about. Okay? So... If I need to familiarize myself with the Bible lesson, what's the Bible lesson for lesson one? God with us. It tells you right there in that step one. The Bible lesson is about God with us. It has all the scripture references of where you can read about it in the Bible. Now you're going to be in that particular chapter in Desire of Ages for the entirety of that lesson. So all through your seven academic subjects, so as I'm learning lesson one in health, lesson one in math, lesson one in music, nature, HGP, language and voice, which Bible lesson am I learning? Lesson one, chapter one in Desire of Ages. So now most of lesson one, they're pretty small books, so it takes you about a month and a half to go through but you're going to be in that one chapter in Desire of Ages for a month and a half. So that's going to be a long time, right? It, we're so used to just getting through material as quick as we can, and we forget half of what we even read, even if we were paying attention. But you're going to spend a month and a half when you're going through Lesson 1 and all of these subjects in Chapter 1 of the Desire of Ages. I just want to say that for me... This has changed, it's revolutionized my whole um, way of study. I don't run through or rush through anything. I, like the family Bible lessons has taught me, 
I start Sabbath afternoon studying my Bible lesson, and each day I add a little bit more, a little bit more in review. And what that does, it allows God to commune with me, to bring into my life situations that I know he is trying to help me understand some of the principles that I've been reading about. And so it, it joins us with him, our creator, and it helps us to know he is there. He is our master teacher, and our communion with him becomes sweeter and sweeter. So here in, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to ask a question? Sure. My question is, um, in this outline, mm -hmm. it has 22. Yes. But when I go online, I don't see... Yes. So, yeah, um, she's asking, how come in your roadmap and route, it has an outline all the way up to chapter or lesson 22? But when you look at the Sunlight Books, you notice that they only have written up to lesson 13. Well, guess what? Then you get to write the other ones. <laughs> and you know, we were uh, studying about Alma McGibbon and her history. And as I was reading about her history, she said she wishes that every single teacher would write their own program. But they won't. Because it's a lot of work. But these books, this material is teaching you a pattern of how to study. How to study the Bible, how to study any topic using the Bible as your foundation. And if you follow that pattern of study, whether or not Sunlight has a book written or not, you can go, if you want to continue to follow this outline, and you say, oh, lesson 17 is on algebra. Sunlight doesn't have a book on algebra. But I'm going to study that first from the Bible, and then I'm going to get a, a good textbook, that isn't full of air. And I'm going to take those facts, and as I'm going through it, I'm going to ask, what does this teach me about God and his kingdom, and how can I practically apply this to my life? How can I use this for him? So each of these topics, whether or not you have a sunlight book, it doesn't matter. It's teaching you a pattern of how to study any topic. Okay, does that make sense? Does this seem overwhelming? Probably. But after you get through over 70 books in the 238 program, there's over 70 books written. After you get through all those, we hope that you start to understand the pattern of how to study for yourself. You know, when we first went to Sunlight, they were not using the Family Bible lessons for their Sabbath school. They were doing their own because they had already been through that series. And so they were going through the Conflict of the Ages series. So each week we had a chapter. And the people who were teaching... Sabbath school had to come up with their own character quality and their own nature lesson. And those were some of the most rich Sabbath schools I've ever been to. Because it's your personal experience. You have to read this chapter and you have to say, what in the world in nature teaches me some of these concepts, some of these principles that are impressed upon my heart? And then it becomes your own. So that's the goal. I never finished all of the Sunlight books in my home school. By the time I was 17, I'd only gotten through Lesson 6 um, because of a lot of different circumstances in our life. We went to Sunlight, and I went right into starting to write school lessons. So it's possible with your children. It's not about getting through all of the books. It's not about going through all of the roadmap and route and all of these. Like There's a, a ton of material suggested. is to get you started and to encourage your children to go and do it for themselves. Okay, so let's go through. We're in the teacher section, step one. So you have your Bible lesson. I was going to point out as you're going to be through, or you're going through Desire of Ages chapter for all this time during the uh, months that you're going through your academic subjects, it lists Bible references for your Bible lesson, so that you're not just reading it from the Desire of Ages, but you're also seeing it outlined in the Bible, and what those stories are, how they're brought out in the Bible. You have your memory verses, your character quality, and so forth. Step two, how, uh, understand how to and do the spelling cards. So number one is the spelling cards. We talked about those. 
Mark your Bible, evaluate your student's character, <coughs> familiarize yourself with the projects, and so forth. These things are going to be this very similar in each of the teacher's books. Things that you, once you read it once, then you're like, oh yeah, next time I don't even need to read it because I see it. But in each of the books, you have this section called projects. Now, it's so important not to just read a bunch of material, but to go and do something with it. So Sunlight wants to help you in this process by giving you projects that relate to what you're learning. So one of the projects, this is the health book. One of the projects suggested, it says, as a family, choose several ways to improve your health and work on these for a year. For example, for example more exercise. So as a family, you're going to talk about, you know, we're studying health. How do we need to improve our health? Maybe it's by exercising more consistently. So it's giving you something as you're going through your book that you can make it practical, bring it into your life. And that's how it's going to uh, impact your children more effectively. It's not just, okay, we're going to go through this material, and then as soon as we get up, we totally forget about everything we just read. Now, let's go and do something with it. So there's a ton of projects recommended. You don't have to do them all. You don't have to even read every single word in these books. This book is a multi-level book. It's recommended for grades 2 through 8. So if you have a second grader, this may be way too much information for them. So you get to pick and choose. Pick and choose. Does that, uh, in a way, it's, some parents say, oh, that's a lot harder, because now I have to think. <laughs> <laughs> We're so used to saying, okay, how many steps should I take? Take five steps. Yes. Sit down. <laughs> turn around. Joshua White, in one of his presentations, it really stood out to me. He told the story of a young boy who went to school, and he was, uh, you know, young and never been to school before, and uh, the first thing in school was to draw a picture. Oh, he was so excited. He loved drawing pictures. And I don't remember all the details, so I'm going to just abbreviate it and change it, I'm sure. But uh, as he, you know, he picked up his, his paintbrush, and he was going to paint whatever he wanted. And the teacher said, wait. I want you all to draw a flower. Oh, I love drawing flowers, he thought. And so he started to pick up his paintbrush again and dip it in a color that he chose. Oh, wait. I want everyone to draw a green stem. Okay, so he draws a green stem. And then he thought, oh, well, maybe I'll draw a, a yellow flower and a green flower and an orange flower. And the teacher said, wait. I want everyone to draw a red flower. So he goes through all these steps. Well, then later on, he goes to a new school. And the first day of school, the teacher says, I want everyone to draw a picture. And he sits there. And she comes over to him. She says, what are you waiting for? Draw a picture. Well, what should I draw? Whatever you want. And you know what he drew? A green stem with a red flower. Because that's how he had been programmed. Many times we take away the creativity of our children by control, right? By thinking for them. We want to teach them how to think, how to process, how to be wise. Uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson, he said that he encouraged his children to try new things and even to do things that were dangerous cautiously. If they were cautiously doing things that were dangerous, then he was totally fine with it. But it was when they weren't cautious that he was concerned. So we want our children to be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other men's thoughts. So that's what Sunlight's trying to help you re-educate your brain to do. It's not do this, you know, every step of the way. It's giving you a lot of ideas. And you get to wade through them to decide, shall I do this, shall I not do this? In our home school, mom was facing a lot of challenges. And so all she could get to was the student section. Forget the teacher section. You know, and she just opened it up and started reading. It's not the most ideal way to go through it. And as 
eventually I took it upon myself. I went back to lesson one and started again because I wanted to get more from it. But Sunlight wants to give you enough resources and start to understand how they're coming up with these things so that you can do it on your own. So if you skip down to step three in each of your books, step three, and you're going to find this in every single lesson, it's going to give you the lesson aim. The lesson aim. What is this particular lesson, health lesson one's aim? What is the aim for your particular lesson? Before you start a subject, you want to know, like, where do you want to go with this? What do you want to accomplish? So it's going to give you an outline of that. Now remember, lesson one is basically an introduction to all of these subjects. So as you get uh, down into other lessons, later lessons, they're going to go more in depth. Step four is to begin the lesson. Now, sunlight gives you a creative way to start the lesson. You don't have to come up with it on your own, but you could. You could come up with other things. Uh, this particular one for health, it says, to begin the health lesson, one way to introduce the lesson might be to take the child to a place where he can see someone very ill with a disease. All right, so we know that we're studying what is health, right? So, oh, to begin this lesson, instead of just opening the book, maybe we go and visit someone at the nursing home. Maybe we meet someone there who's young, but they're in a nursing home. Why are they in a nursing home? Let's talk to them. Let's minister to them. You know, someone asked, how do you get your children involved in service? Sunlight has a billion ways listed in here. And it's about seeing needs around you and going and doing that. All right? So that's a suggested way to begin the health lesson. You could come up with a different one. That's just one that is suggested. And then, of course, step five, actually start your lesson. Now, the next section is called Steps in Bible Study. Steps in Bible Study is also found in your Bible Study booklet, this one right here. And you're going to see those same steps in every single book. It's giving you, like, if someone were to just pick up this book, and this is the only one that they ever saw, it's giving you the resource right there of how to study the Bible. What's the first step in Bible study? Pray. And then you read your verses, you meditate, you memorize, you look up key words in Strong's Concordance, and so forth. Your, the next little section here is called the review questions. Those are review questions for your Bible lesson from the Bible. So we know that we have our Bible lesson here in the Desire of Ages chapter, but we also have those verses, the story in the Bible. And it's listed uh, in this little book as well. This is an easy way for you to just take the little book, go out wherever, and study your Bible lesson. So if I were to open this up, it's going to, the same information that you saw in your teacher section, you have your Bible reading, your memory verses, your character quality, and then it's going to have those review questions, all right? So as you start to get familiar with these books, you're going to see things repeated over and over. Oh, okay, so I saw it there, but I also have it here. This is going to be a lot easier to travel with versus a whole book sometimes if I just need to go through the Bible lesson. So that's why we have this, just an extra tool. We've talked before about how character is one of the most important things, the goal in true education to develop a godly character. And so here we have a little simple tests on evaluating your child's character or your own as the teacher uh, as is appropriate. So our character quality for this whole lesson, the, the time we're spending in all of these academic books is going to be on love. And so this tells you more about how to evaluate your character in regards to love. And it's not to give a failing grade or anything like that, but it's to show the areas in which we need improvement, how we can develop more. There's also sections in your teacher uh, part on health uh, references, scripture references. What Sunlight did was when they were studying this topic, they looked up every word in the Strong's Concordance on health. And they wrote them down. And then they saw how they could use them throughout the book. And so those are just more scripture references in, uh, that can be used in your study. Your answer key is for your review section. We're going to skip all of that. 
And then if you get to your student section, after all of this you have your, sometimes you have songs listed in there. Usually those songs are from Christ in Song, the old hymnal. But just before your student section you have a gardening sheet. How many of us love to garden? I am not one of them, I'm sorry. <laughs> But we know that agriculture is so important in regards to education. And this, in every lesson, it gives you ideas for your garden, both in season and out of season. And it's not just ideas of how to incorporate uh, a garden into your life, but also how to bring, what? Your academic subject into the garden. So sometimes it'll have you, um, like this here, it's talking about, this is our health lesson. It says, as you plan your garden, whether it be flowers, vegetables, lawns, shrubs, and trees, plan to plant them where they will get all they need to be, what do you think the word is? Healthy. Guess what? It just brought in the health lesson. So it's showing you, you're not just focusing on one thing. You're tying it always back to your subject, back to your subject. All right, then you have your student section. Within your student section, this is your information. Notice they start out with a section called research. These are methods of study, research. All right, so this is your information. This is your, your facts about the topic, and it's tying it back to what? The Bible. So all throughout, like as you're looking at this subject, uh, here you're studying about health in general, um, what is health, um, the wealth of health, uh, health as talents, and all of these things. It's always, as it's giving you those facts, it's asking you, what does this teach you about God and his kingdom? And it's bringing in those Bible verses. There's no other curriculum that I have ever seen that does that. And that's what we always want. We want to be filling our minds with these things. From one research section to another, you have, at the end of a research section, a review. You have other things called remind and reinforce. Those are sections to help you remember what you're going through, not just to leave it in the book. All right. We've covered a lot of things here. We have seven academic subjects. They're all color-coordinated. They're all these different colors, and so now mom's going to come up, and we're going to do an activity. Does anyone have any questions before we go to the activity? No? I'm sure a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And some of you aren't ready, really. You know, your children aren't ready, but it kind of gives you a glimpse into what is in the future if you use the sunlight material. Well... <coughs> This is one of the first, day, the first day of school is always a fun day, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Not just the first day, but the whole week can be. And so this is called the Rainbow Covenant Book. And so there's a PDF for uh, the cover, front and back, uh, in the Sunlight website, PDFs. And then it has these, these pages, an index, or a table of contents, what you're getting here. You're going to learn about the Bibles, the textbook, the color light, colorants, rainbow colors in the sanctuary, reflect here. Oh, interior decorating with colors and reflect rainbows and then an answer key. I just spent six days uh, teaching this rainbow covenant book. Uh, to a virtual online school. And um, that was in, a new and interesting experience. Um, but <clears throat> basically, you're just reading this information, and if you read it ahead of time, then you can pretty much talk about it. And so that's what I did. And of course, I always study more. So, so I, just looking over the sunlight material, you have the spelling for the scriptures that you can actually use with it. I didn't. Um, use it, but there's a book in nature called Light and Heat. So that, just to help you see that this is just the beginning uh, of looking at light. I have posters on light, a poster back there, what light <coughs> is, it's energy. Um, then you have the Bible is the textbook, and this goes over the colors of the academic subjects. 
and why why the colors so the children learn um, if they haven't learned this through going through the family Bible lessons they learn what each color represents spiritually and then you can add to the list so here's color and light and they get to color these circles here and they learn the primary colors and when you blend two colors um, you what color you get and and then um, colored light how many of you have played around with colored lights? Anybody? I would like to do that sometime. Um, so the difference between color and light and the mixture of the, those things and color like in paints or um, just, you know, crayons even and what you get. And so you get, hi there. I guess I should hold on to this differently. Um, you, they get to color in this book. And that's basically what the children did um, online. They just basically colored here. But then some of them, I told them, just get a piece of paper, draw, and do some coloring as well. Here's, a, here's another, you know, color the circles. Uh, red plus yellow equals orange. Yellow plus blue equals green. So they get to color in here. And then um, this is uh, Colors in the Sanctuary, and that was fun for me because I, I teach the sanctuary here at Uchi Pines to the trainees, and some of our trainees are looking forward to that class, <laughs> yeah. and that's exciting. Um, and so the colors in the sanctuary, their meaning, spiritual meaning, and then the opposite, like red and blood. It's a primary color, red is. The meaning, sacrifice, John 3.16. And Leviticus 17, 14, for the life of all flesh is the blood. So when you see red, or here in Alabama, you'll see a little flicker of red uh, go by a cardinal, you know, a male cardinal. So beautiful. And, but that can make you think um, of the blood of Christ as sacrifice. But the opposite is anger. See red, which is a result of selfishness. Sometimes an angry man has a red face. And then on the, the next page, you have reflect... And this is some interior decorating. So red is a color that stimulates the strongest emotional response. That's interesting. How many people are wearing red today? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Okay. And then uh, more on the rainbow here and then your answer key. And then all these pages are in plastic sleeves. And I want you to know that we do have these notebooks for sale, made up already. Uh, Kim will have to tell us how much um, because the print shop has made them. And um, then the plastic sleeves as well. So this is a book that they build. And it doesn't just have to end at the end of the week. It can continue on for the whole year or on and on and on. It's the beginning. What, I had a fifth grade teacher in public school. And she had us write stories all the time. And, of course, these were not spiritual stories. I mean, I can remember them. It's, it's just another way of remembering, too. Um, enormous the flea. I mean, this is so crazy. It, this flea in the circus, you know, and how they... It's, but my father, he was an artist, and he would make the covers for me. And I can still see those covers, especially that one. <laughs> and safari and some other strange things. So you, you don't want your children to, to be writing just crazy stories like that. Uh, Kimberly started at a young age uh, writing and drawing. And she, I can remember she um, drew elephants and wrote a story about them. And then she uh, wrote a story about children in school. And that's when I got to thinking, you know, are these, um, is this good? And, uh, and then I started to help her uh, do her writing more with a spiritual, you know, emphasis. And that got her uh, into making this little paper called the, it was called The Young Pilgrim. And that started her publishing work. You know, so you, you just, everything that you can see, especially if your child has a talent in. And we have some young people here that are very good at art and drawing. And so uh, you want them to use that talent and develop it for good. And I can see all the way back, you know, from those first beginnings, how God was leading I didn't even know, you know, what the end result would be. But at 16, 17, she sets down in ministry work, not there to be trained, but yes, on the job training. The Spirit of Prophecy talks about that. 
on-the-job training. That's what children are. They're on-the-job training with mom at home. And when dad is home, on-the-job training with dad. And we heard uh, Brother Pedro say, you know, a little five-year-old wants to be with dad more. And this is where little boys learn to be men. But if our men are not men, how can they model a man, a true man for a child? Or a mother. Oh, like my mother, she was off to work uh, when I was about um, 10, 10 or 12. And my little sister, she was my baby sister, uh, she was younger and she really needed mom. And, um, and that, when I had children, I didn't want to have to do that to my child. And I didn't even understand um, uh, God's emphasis on the, the need for a mother being home. <clears throat> That's where moms need to be. <laughs> and dads need to be, they need to learn, if you don't know how to be a true husband or a true father, we have instruction, Adventist home. And then how to, how to be that father in child guidance, you know, how to understand how to train your children. So back to the book, and, and we want the children. I have the table set up behind there. We don't have seats for everyone, so you can come back and sit in a chair. Um, parents, you don't just say, go and do. No, you are there working with your child, talking to them, maybe reading some of this information to them, or read it a little bit and then tell them, talk to them about it. And there are pictures back there. What you do, well, you read, not all of this, but the older child can read it um, as well. Find out why white, or what white represents. What does it represent, do you know? Purity. <laughs> Purity. That's right, you're already on top of it. And then you look um, up, at the, there's several scriptures here. And I got these white boards. And then, you know, I said, God, at first I had colored boards, but I didn't have all of them. Oh, white, purity, yes, okay. And then I looked down, I'm in, this, in Staples, and I looked down, there's this box, and this kind of rainbow color coming through, and I see this. I go, oh, that's perfect. You know, what we're doing, <clears throat> it's not to bring glory to our children. It's to bring glory to God. <clears throat> Mothers, women. <clears throat> As I was growing up, I saw churches falling apart, you know, and now we put millions of dollars into our churches. But we need to represent God in the way that we value Him. So the white purity and then the rainbow, we, we can see today the need for teaching our children the true meaning of the rainbow. So that if they encounter the wrong meaning, they can share what they've learned of the true meaning. It's so beautiful. And so for the little child that's, say, under nine, okay, that's me. <laughs> I have paper back there, white paper for the cover, and then the colored um, pages. So, and then I have the colored... Um, what do you call these? Pipe cleaners, you know? Let them be creative. You know, this is my, I go, how, what should I do? You know, how do I keep this book together? And, um, <clears throat> and on each page here, I mean, you can, the parent can write what it is or just say, and the child can find a picture back there that, that's red, like there's red apples, red strawberries, and they can paste the red on here. You know, so that when they eat a strawberry, oh yeah, and look at the seed, and the seed is the word of God, and we plant the strawberry seeds, and we'll get another plant, and we plant God's word, guess what, we'll get another Christian. Yeah. So, <clears throat> they can make their own rainbow book, however they want. You can buy one of these, uh, or we just have, instead of the notebook, we just have the pages, the cover and the page colored paper, and then you can have the child uh, get just a, a colored piece of paper. We have actually, that's expensive. Those colored pages are expensive. I learned so much. <laughs> um, but you can get pages back there that they can actually put in their book. If you don't want to make a book here, you can make it at home. 
um, but take the, the pages home. Uh, plastic sleeves just keeps it nice. Here I put it. Now, God didn't make this, but a lighthouse. Each one of us can be a lighthouse. Yeah. And the white, purity, the red sacrifice, and I put it under red. And then, you know, the older you are, you can start finding quotes and scripture and put that with it. Learn to make a book. This was the beginning, not this, but the beginning of Kim's uh, publishing work was making books. Yeah. And we have students here that come and sometimes they go through uh, the print shop uh, for their work uh, study and some, you know, have degrees in this, that, and the other thing, but they don't know how to really do any publishing. Or they want to um, start their own uh, sanitarium or lifestyle center, but they don't know how to publish, you know, and, and print and advertise and things like that. So these are, these are um, skills that can be used in ministry, in um, some kind of work to bring in money. Um, but remembering as a missionary, we're not here to make money, are we? If if money comes, let me tell you, if, if you can, can use the money in God's work, he's going to pour it on. But it's a responsibility. The more money you have, the more you have to protect it, right? And uh, today, it's, we're going to, well, we just have to put everything before the Lord. Everything at the altar, on the altar, because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. And we, we saw in the last couple of years how fast things can change. All right, so that's um, all I wanted to share with you. Uh, we're going to give, uh, what time? Till, well, as much time as you want up until supper time. You can work with your children. Uh, use um, the other three rooms for going in and finding things. I have other things, too, on rainbows back there. So if you have a younger child and you want to uh, do some painting with them, um, there's some things over there as well. What yes. Are supposed to do with the you, you cut them out and glue them on, so on the paper. Per color, right? Yeah. You're looking for, under the red, you're looking for objects that God has made, especially, that are red. So I have things back there. Orange. And then what does orange mean? So once again, the, using the seen to point to the unseen. And that's where the spiritual comes in. It's the spiritual lessons that's the higher education. Wherever you go that's really not into the spiritual things, you can find facts. You can, okay, let's just put red things, you know, on the red. No, but what's important is what it points to, to God, to remember God. Yeah, that's the most important thing. And to the natural heart, to a child, they, they may not be interested in that. You know, mine weren't, weren't interested. You know. But you still tell them. And we're, t we're told that Hannah, who prayed for a little boy, she got her little boy, and um, he called him Samuel, and we're told those first three years of his life, before she took him to the synagogue, everything, every familiar thing, she pointed him to the spiritual. Mm -hmm. True education. But don't drive it into the ground. Watch your child. Just like you watch other people, how they respond. Oh, you know, you said it twice already. I don't want to hear it again. You know? <laughs> okay, but so it'd say it a different way. Yeah, show them a different way. So this is just a, a way to bring in color and light and have a better understanding of light. Because who is light? God is light. Who does he want to be light? You, by beholding him, you'll become the light. He's the light of the world, and he wants to shine through us. We're just reflectors. So anything else? Let's um, let these children get into this, and you too, parents, you might like putting together your own book. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we are so overjoyed with what you want to teach each of us individually as well as collectively. We're thankful that we can share in this experience, and then when we go home, we can continue building, building for eternity. We want to be like you. We want your image, your mark. Your mark is the Sabbath, the day, the memorial of creation, and we can study creation every day. And when the Sabbath comes, it'll mean even more to us because we know you through it, through the lens of nature. Thank you for um, what you're going to 
share with each child especially how you want to commune with them. You want to talk with them. You want them to hear your voice and discern your voice, just like the sheep with the shepherd. So teach each one, including moms and dads. It's my prayer, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.